Hello, today I have here from the LEGO Architecture Skylines series, their depiction of the skyline of Tokyo, Japan. Before I get up close and start showing the finer details, just look at the entire collection of models that are depicted here and how they're presented. I think this is a very nice presentation. There's so much variety here with different textures, different colors, the juxtaposition of natural elements against man-made, traditional structures, modern structures, you know, suggestions of technology versus just traditional art. Uh, you know, just a lot of things are covered here. And so just, you know, that initial, initial view, that initial impression on the eye, I think is good. I'm going to look at this from left to right. And the first thing we see here is strangely unnamed. It's a traditional five-tier pagoda inspired temple structure and they just didn't officially name it in the set as far as i've personally been able to see correct me if i'm wrong on this but i believe there is one structure like this that's large that's in the tokyo greater region and it's not this set of colors so i don't know exactly what this is supposed to represent unfortunately lego didn't even suggest to us what it could represent. Uh, not in the manual, not in the official set description. Oh well. Tokyo Tower is depicted in a way very, very similar and built in a way very, very similar to the last Eiffel Tower that was done on a, a similar size and scale. I like the look of this. It, it has some interesting design decisions used. Uh, you know, the, the actual build of it is, in real life, is, I guess, similar to the Eiffel Tower. It's very skeletal and this has some some solid sections which is just a just an art choice you know uh, even the the archways which on the lego architecture most recent smaller eiffel tower on their paris skyline set uh, those those arches were made from uh, clear pieces that were printed well here we just get solid pieces so it just you know, changes the visual weight of everything you know this is a fully three-dimensional model is fully symmetrical so it extends out the back quite a bit. I like all the red personally, and I like the shapes in there. It's just, it's very visually pleasing to me personally. So even if it's not necessarily the most accurate possible rendition that they could have done at this scale, I still like how it worked out. You know, some artistic license does need to be taken in these sets, and I think the designers have a right to take that license. Down here, you get some of the, the cherry blossom trees or just cherry trees that are blossoming and forgive me if it takes me multiple tries to get the full long name of the the park the natural park that this represents the preserve area it's chidori gafuchi chidori chidori gafuchi except with less accentation and less tonality than that it's a place that has these trees and it's beautiful <laughs> And I think the trees that are depicted here look very good. They also show just a little bit of the waterway and a small structure back there that's supposed to represent a piece of the Imperial Palace. And I wasn't able to identify that either. They did not identify it officially. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. It looks like an amalgamation between one of the entryways, like a, a gate structure, and one of the uh, corner, uh, like, old Edo Castle turrets like halfway in between the two it's just it's strange it doesn't i feel like if it was trying to be either it would have been done differently but it's a little bit like each and not completely like either hmm. okay moving on this structure is really nice to look at uh it's a really interesting lego build i don't think i've ever seen anything built this way i won't spoil the interior uh construction of it if you want to experience that for yourself. But this is the Mode Gakugen uh, Tower, uh, Cocoon Tower, they call it. And those are prints, those large, uh, just curved pieces. Those are prints. There are two different types of prints used here. One that has the, the large round, oh, I don't even, it's not, it's not really a window. It's a collection of windows in there, just the, the ellipse on each and then they've got the one for the lower area that doesn't have that and just overall i just like the look of the thing 
it's interesting. It's again, symmetrical, looks the same all the way around. And it's a really interesting build. Pretty simple though, but nice. And I appreciate the inclusion of those very large printed pieces. Would have sucked if they had switched over to stickers for this because they've not done stickers very much for architecture. And I hope they, they continue with that, that trend. Now, this here is supposed to be Mount Fuji. And I had trouble with this too. I'm having trouble with a lot of things here. And I feel like a lot of it is just due to my lack of familiarity with the subject matter, which is, which is shameful. I've seen tons of Japanese movies, uh, at the very least, and also TV series, real ones, live action. But uh, that's obviously supposed to be Mount Fuji, but it doesn't quite look like it. Because Mount Fuji is like the perfect volcano shape. It's a volcano. An active volcano. And this doesn't have that perfect volcano shape. I don't, what is that shape over there? Why is it not symmetrical? Not even trying to be symmetrical. I appreciate the uh, attempt to not have a fully symmetrical or fully uh, flat level snow cap on this. But the shape is just weird. And as I looked around, trying to figure out what what side this was viewed from or something, if they're getting creative with it, uh, I realized that this is not actually trying to show, at least as far as I can tell, it's not actually trying to show Mount Fuji on the whole. I believe what they're doing here is showing some of the foothills and the surrounding uh, hill structures and mountainous structures that are between the main Tokyo space and Mount Fuji itself. So you're seeing a silhouette. Just the snow part is actually Mount Fuji. And then these are foothills here, places that are closer to us. I think that's what's going on, although it doesn't necessarily look like that because they do show the sides going all the way down. And they should be continued on if they want to actually set the backdrop. So I don't understand that fully, and I'm just going to move on. This next space represents Shibuya Crossing. And it's just showing you a bunch of the buildings there, the brightly lit buildings anytime you see pictures of downtown Tokyo, especially at night, you know, there's just all the, all the, the lights and the, the, you know, LED boards and the, the TV screens that are huge and all over the place. And this is just depicting all of that, that vibrance. And they even have interesting prints to represent crosswalks down below those one by ones. I think that's new for 2020. And this is just really nice. It just looks really cool. I like all the different printed tile pieces that they use together, as well as transparent colored pieces. It was really cool to use one of the Minecraft tiles, because why not? You know, you don't have to stick to a specific theme with a piece. I, I like the I like the look of this, and it was fun to put together. I actually missed one of the buildings at first, came back around to it when I realized I had a few pieces left over, and there are also a couple of additional. Right now, there's just one additional print around the corner over here. So it's nice. I feel like it's a good use of pieces and a good use of the space, just in general. And then over here, this is a building called Tokyo Big Sight. I love the build for this. It's very curious and works out really, really well. You know, half of it being upside down. Never would have expected that. It's another situation where I won't completely spoil the build techniques. I mean, you can see a lot of it from the outside, but it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting and it's different. So those are all things that I appreciate. Last up is the Tokyo sky tree. Now this is a rather different build. All those flexible white pieces are not attached at the top. They are collected inside of that cone. Just the, the ends are just all collected together and they fit. It's, pretty clever to be honest with you but once we get up to here the cleverness i feel just kind of breaks down and frankly the shape doesn't look appropriate to me the top is kind of cool the pieces that were used there but again the shaping just doesn't match even the official photos that lego itself includes in the instructions like this part i can understand uh, going with the black against the white they went with high contrast low detail which is just an artistic choice, uh, which I think is fine, even though they did go with high detail for the downtown space, but it's, it's the shaping 
more than anything. Let me back out a little bit. So when you compare that, just focus on the, the black section and up. Compare that to this, what it's supposed to represent. Just the overall shape. I don't understand this disc part right here. This dish, it just sticks out so much and isolates that section. It's, there's so much negative space beneath it. There are so many things that Lego can do with round structures in micro scale. Uh, it just feels like they went too contrasty with it. And then notice how the very tip, the very top of this in real life is actually larger. Whereas here, the smallest diameter space is right at the top, the tip of the candlestick there. So that's just weird. And then the use of, of just the black there, I don't know, maybe they didn't have the desirable, the most desirable color there, something in a, a blue range. And certainly, I'm, I'm sure they didn't have the budget to print it up or anything. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the idea of going high contrast, low detail here and focusing on the overall shapes, but the shapes just aren't right, in my opinion. And, and easily could have been done better, more accurately. Here's a quick look at the spare or leftover parts. And as usual, they include one extra of each of the little one by one printed pieces. So that's always nice, as well as the little one by one pyramids. Now here's the difficult part of the review. This set right here costs $60 US. Six zero, not one six, not 16, 60. Price to part ratio looks okay except for the fact that so many of the pieces in this are tiny. It does have some decent sized pieces, so that does help to offset things. And, you know, let, let's, let's never ignore the fact that Lego intentionally prices architecture sets higher than they need to be, higher than they ought to be, because they can. That's just business. You can definitely revolt against that, and I, I will support that, but supply and demand availability of profit margin they will always be pricing things that are targeted strictly towards the collector market strictly towards adults as memorabilia and such they'll, they'll always be pricing those things higher and they always have done that for the architecture line so you know we never have gotten great values well with some rare exceptions uh, from the architecture line but this to me just feels like it goes even farther it feels like this is more overpriced than usual even for the architecture line for the amount of stuff that's actually here yeah the price to part ratio is fine and yes there are some large pieces and there are some printed pieces too and that's good uh, but moving beyond the the value discussion uh, just summarizing my thoughts overall there are definitely a number of strange design decisions here and at least to me you know i tried to spend some time Googling at least images of the things that are depicted here to understand better, to establish better context for myself. But um, yeah, I, I kind of came up empty on, on a lot of things or it, they just didn't make sense. The, the way that things are designed didn't make sense to me. And it maybe it's just my ignorance, like I said, but I don't know. Some stuff seems like it needs to be modified. Now, for someone who's looking at this from the outside who doesn't care so much about all the finer details and things and is is looking more at the iconography of it all i think it's beautiful like just you know forget all the forget all the details entirely you look at it i think it looks really nice i think it looks really nice on display i do wish that more of the skylines sets would stick to the the narrow depth so that they would all fit onto uh, shelves that aren't too deep but I mean this isn't this isn't too deep it, it will fit on most shelves even even some shelves that are kind of skinny that are just wall shelves you know where it's just a single platform and it doesn't stick out very much isn't designed to hold a lot of weight so you know practical considerations are okay but just overall this looks very nice and the how colorful it is is wonderful and, and the the different shapes that are included here I think that just from an artistic perspective it's a nice thing to look at if you want to be more specific about it if you uh, want to commemorate a trip to japan yourself by getting and displaying one of these or if you're familiar with the tokyo region yourself then you'll probably find more problems with this than i do by far or maybe you'll go down to the comment section and explain to me 
why I'm wrong. Either way, I've said what I have to say about this. I like the look of it from a distance, but looking at the details uh, has some problems. And the biggest problem is that price. My personal opinion. You want to see how this went together? Check out either my real-time pure build or my speed build. I will give you links to both of the channels with those types of content in the video description as usual. One of the videos will be linked in the end screen, which you're going to see momentarily. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.